Hello and welcome to this programme on integrated reporting, the proposed global reporting approach which would bring all of an organisation's reporting, not just the financial reporting, together. My name is Robert Bruce and I'm a financial journalist. Integrated reporting aims to provide a connected way of showing how an organisation's strategy, governance, performance and prospects lead to the creation of value over the short, the medium and the long term. It takes us a long way from just the figures and it is rapidly gaining traction in the business world. Late last year, after much deliberation and pilot programmes, the International Integrated Reporting Council released its framework. And with me today to talk about the current state of integrated reporting and to talk about its future progress and the challenges ahead is Paul Druckmann, the CEO of the International Integrated Reporting Council. Paul, can we just start with that framework? It's been published now for a couple of months. Can you just talk us through what sort of feedback you've had, what people have been saying, and really any surprises you come across? I think the surprises mm. has actually been the, um, the lack of negative uh, comments. What's happened in, in the release of the final framework is that, um, that people have seen that we've evolved and taken into account their, their comments and their challenges mm. and, I've, and so far the feedback has been it's a great improvement, thank you. So that's all going reasonably well, reasonably to plan, nobody said this is nonsense. Yeah. Um, what do you see as the challenges ahead? Well the biggest challenge is to maintain momentum. When we started out on this in mm. January 2012, in, in mm -hmm. the, the real pushing with mm -hmm. the cons yep. integrated reporting, um, you know, we were worried whether there would be momentum. Yep. Um, what happened was that actually we, it, it got carried away to a part that, I think, that you mm -hmm. know, Robert, was mm. way beyond our expectations. Mm -hmm. Of course, now we have to keep that going. So to some extent, I think that's a, a very mm. key, key factor. Um, the, other, the other challenge is to make sure that, that people are aware that we are talking about an evolution in corporate reporting. Yep. Um, there's still the mm. stigma about this being another report or more reporting. And in mm. fact, there's also the lack of understanding in the financial reporting community that we are talking about this evolution in corporate reporting, mm. of which integrated reporting is a catalyst. And it, the challenge to me is to not be yet more Yep. but to be <coughs> part of. Yes, um, so you're, you're not part of overload, you're actually part of what people are trying to do anyway. Yes, yep. and, and, and I think the interesting, I mean, there's a great point mm. you raised there about the people mm. doing anyway. In so many of the circumstances right around the world, you know, I go to companies and they say, you know, well, we, we're not doing this integrated reporting. And, you know, and in fact, they mm. are. Now, they yep. may not recognize it and mm. it may not be in the form that, yep. that we talk about, but you know, any good company is going to be thinking strategically. And integrated reporting is not just about the final product, it's about the demonstrating the integrated thinking. Yep. And so yes. they almost are all doing it. And, 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 the value, and the value of what they get back from the integrated thinking process. Yes, yep. and at the moment mm. it's actually, you know, it, it, you find, what we find is that the, um, there's a frustration Mm -hmm. um, from the many parties about, well, there's too many reports, we don't know where to get this, that and the other. And when they start to really interro yeah, mm. interrogate what integrated reporting yep. is about, it, it's, it's a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to get, if I'm honest, the financial reporting co community is the most guilty yep. because their mindset is compliance. Yes. Their mindset is not what information is mm -hmm. useful. And, 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 uh, and maybe that's an unfair categorization of a great, you know, of a terrific yeah. um, um, profession. But, but, you know, it's not their fault, it's where we've ended up. Because mm. they would prefer more compliance. And there is the question of how far you can continue with this without having some form of assurance, if only just to push the whole process into a, a critical mass, if you like. Yeah. I mean, how far do you think you can carry on? You've done very well by saying, well, it'll evolve and there's no mandatory stuff in here at all. How far do you think you can go before a regulator or somebody needs to come in and say, nope, you have to do this and then people will follow? I want regulators to create a regulatory environment that yep. allows integrated reporting to flourish. Yep. The compliance mindset is actually, um, 
I, I, my, my interactions across the world with those in financial reporting, mm -hmm. both from the advisors and the that mm -hmm. set, as well as from the companies, as well as from from other stakeholders, is actually they are frustrated. Yeah, they mm -hmm. they know that that they want to do more. They're, they're often frustrated by the legal and regulatory environment that they're working within. So what are your priorities as of now? Where we are at the moment is that the, 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 the organisations that have got involved with integrated reporting to date and the individuals that have got involved, one could call the innovators. They already are trying and thinking in, in a vein that's, that's towards integrated reporting and integrated thinking. We now need to create that same momentum with what I would call the early adopters. Yeah. Okay. We're not after mass adoption. I don't think the market's ready for it. I think it would end up being compliance and assurance driven, which leads to more. Yeah. So we still need that, that evolution. But we do need to make a step up. And then the step up really needs to go to those who are likely to be interested in integrated reporting, but perhaps haven't cottoned onto it yet. Mm -hmm. And also those who are already doing more reporting and starting to not just do the annual report, yeah. but thinking of broader. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's who we need mm -hmm. to get involved. You know, what have you, you've, you've been running pilot programs. Yeah. What, what has been coming out of those? What have you learned from the pilot programs? I think the biggest lesson we've learned, I mean, the, the biggest benefit we've gained is their insight to the framework. Right. So, yep. you know, tick, we now, we've got a framework, it's not as though it's stuck in stone, but we're yep. there. And actually the pilot programme has been successful, I believe, mm -hmm. because we have a, a framework that is fit for purpose. Okay, so, so that's great. I, if you're asking me the things that, 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 that we've learned, I think there are, that there are two aspects. The first is the importance of integrated thinking. Again, it's a piece of jargon, mm. but it basically means breaking down the silos and understanding the strategy of the business, not just at the level of the CEO and the board, but actually down into the silos and the departments and the business units. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we, I, I certainly wasn't expecting that to be such a fundamental piece of um, change in businesses. In some businesses they've got it already, don't get yep. me wrong. Um, but in others it, it's really brought that, that to the fore. Um, the second piece is actually from the past that needs to go into the future now, even more so, is providing evidence that this is actually valuable. Yeah. So oh, why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. You know, I use the, the, the set phrase, you know, that, that reporting influences behaviour. Okay, because otherwise why are we bothering influences behaviour? But does it? Yeah. You know, and that's not just the behaviour within the companies, but also the behaviour of markets and things like that. And we've really, really got to start getting into the depths of that. Not just us, you know, we need to be the, almost the collation point. Yeah. There's a great piece of work that came out, I think it was last week, from Harvard Business School, a uh, professor there called George Serafin. And George has done quite a lot of work on integrated reporting. And with the companies that are doing integrated reporting, what do their investor base look like as against others? And the findings of that research are actually that you've got longer term, more stewardship type investors in these major corporates who are doing integrated reporting as against the transient investors yeah. that are mm -hmm. dominating the market too much mm -hmm. in, for, our, yeah. for the sustainability of markets yeah. Um, yeah. at the moment. Mm. And that's just, I mean, that's just a snapshot of the sort of evidence we need to yeah. start finding yeah. at, at both ends. Because people talk about investors as being the elephant in the room. Um, and it's never been quite clear, I mean, you and I know that investors ought to get this, but it's never been quite clear as to how far they have got it, as it were. What are you seeing on that front? You can't just think about investors in, in, in one, one group. However, what we find is that at the moment, the, the way that investors tend to look at a company is from data and information up yeah. and then they're looking to tr then they go and interrogate the company etc looking for the market mechanisms and the the mm -hmm. the strategy of the company what what we've what what integrated reporting brings and a, it's a great phrase is actually it it enables them to look at the company through the door of strategy rather than only mm -hmm. through data 
So you either come through data, but you still need to be understanding the strategy, or you come through strategy to what mm -hmm. interests you in data, mm -hmm. or, or both. Yeah. But I think at the moment, there hasn't been that piece. And what our, one of our challenges, going back to the challenges, one of our challenges is to get investors to realize that this is going to be available to them. You don't have to wait to the one-to-one -one briefings. And don't forget, in most cases, the, um, the asset managers have decreased mm -hmm. in size, number of yeah. people, number of resources. So how are they going to get mm -hmm. to that information? Mm -hmm. um, and integrated reporting is one of the keys. We need to educate them. I mean, integrated reporting came up in discussions at the World Economic Forum yeah. earlier in the year. Um, and of course, it's working around the world. How, what, what signs are you seeing from different parts of the world, different enthusiasms, different take up and so on? The mature markets mm -hmm. are very interested in integrated reporting and in different countries, I won't go into country by country, right throughout the sort of mature capital markets that we know. Mm -hmm. Um, there is a great interest in integrated reporting, also a lot of detail mm -hmm. that they want to understand and deal with because that is the way that, that they work. But it's, it's more than engagement and interest, it's actually how is this going to work. Yeah. In, certainly in parts of Asia, there's a dynamism um, because they're looking for a catalyst, they're looking for something new. Yeah. Right. So th 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 there are things that, in many ways, we've almost been pulling back, saying, mm -hmm. you know, don't run too fast, certainly until the framework was arrived at. So the enthusiasm in places like Malaysia and Singapore and other parts of the world like that is, is, is dramatic. The USA is an interesting area where there's very much of a compliance attitude driven through the SEC and things. Um, I would have to say that there's a lack of understanding mm -hmm. rather, you know, and, and therefore we're in earlier days there. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've got some, you know, the likes of, of PepsiCo and um, mm -hmm. um, Prudential Financial and Microsoft and others who've mm -hmm. been in the pilot program are great, yep. and Clorox and companies mm -hmm. like that. But, but you, you know, in general, th there isn't the same mm -hmm. magnitude of uh, understanding. Yeah. One of the reasons it was referenced at the World Economic Forum was because th these were CEOs talking about it. Are you finding this, cause, and that's where the, the, mm. the real pickup needs to be throughout the corporate world. I mean, are you you're getting good traction from CEOs? Yes, mm. could be better. Mm -hmm. um, CEOs have got a lot on their plate. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when, it, when, when it's referred to as integrated reporting, mm -hmm. Yeah. and reporting is the name, you don't, it, it's not as interesting to them. Yeah. When they understand, and I th mm -hmm. you know, the, many of them do, mm -hmm. but I wish more did, when they mm -hmm. understand that what we're talking about is an articulation of your company strategy, yeah. then they get excited. You've got the framework out there. That's now bedding down. Do you think there'll be a need for more guidance further down the road? Yeah. Yes is the simple answer. It depends what more guidance mm -hmm. means. Yep. Um, you know, so, so what does it mean? Yeah. Um, to my mind, in the mm -hmm. next, certainly the next 12 to 24 months, more guidance means um, leading practice, best practice and evidence, mm -hmm. you know, rather than more deep technical guidance. And when I say evidence, I mean both academic mm -hmm. type evidence, but also going back to the point about you know, what's actually happened and is it, is it making a difference? Mm -hmm. um, so, so I would say that's, that's the short term in terms of guidance. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the longer term, w we have to understand that, it's some, that part of integrated reporting is allowing every company to tell its unique story, yeah. its unique strategy, but also being able to compare. Yeah. And it's when we get to that milestone, when the investors and others are really seeing integrated reporting as a core tool that actually we might have to see, well, what does that mean? Do you yeah. need more detailed guidance or standards? Um, now, our, our remit at this time is let's see what happens in the data and information field in terms of, yeah. you know, it, are there sector KPIs? Are there standards that are by region or whatever it is. How does that evolve and develop? 
rather than trying to say now how that has to happen. Yeah. So my answer to you is in the short term, mm -hmm. it's the, the, the best practice and leading practice bit. In the longer term, I actually don't know. Yeah. But let's keep an open mind and see, yeah. see what happens. It's going to need something. Where are we going to be in five years' time, ten years' time? What, what, would, you, what would you like to see? T to my mind, if we talk five years, we will see an uh, inevitability that this is happening. Right. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty much there yep. now, but we'll see it in numbers. Yes. So there'll be a quanti quantum mm -hmm. that is inevitable. Um, if we talk about ten years' time, then you know, integrated reporting and this evolution of corporate reporting will have happened. Mm -hmm. The fact is that corporate reporting becomes, does it evolve into something that is meaningful, yeah. um, away from the compliance only driven mindset. So if you said 10 years time, I believe integrated reporting will be the corporate reporting norm, but the infrastructure around it will also have evolved. Yeah. Paul Druckmann, thank you very much indeed. Great pleasure. Thank you.